Welcome to our online act of worship for the 6th of September, the 13th Sunday after Trinity. I'm Martin Jackson, the Vicar of St Cuthbert's Church in Shotley Bridge, the parish of Benfieldside, and I'm priest in charge of the Church of St John the Evangelist, Castleside. It's from St John's Church that this act of worship now comes. Our Eucharists will be celebrated as usual in each church for Sunday morning, 9 o'clock in St John's Church, and then 10.30 in St Cuthbert's Church in Shotley Bridge. Wherever you may be now, you are most welcome. This is a service of the Word, though we follow the structure of the Eucharist in its first part at least. There will be an act of spiritual communion, and we use as well readings and prayers which relate to this 13th Sunday after Trinity. Here we find ourselves in God's presence. We seek that that presence may deepen within us, that we may know Christ to be our guide, that we may know the Holy Spirit to dwell with us. So we pray in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. We'll hear words of St. Paul. You should love your neighbour as yourself. They're not originally his words. They're words that go back to ancient times in the Jewish scriptures, the Old Testament as we call it, and words which Jesus himself takes up. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, the first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, Love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. The commandments to love God, love our neighbour, yet we know how we fall short. And so in penitence we come to make the confession of our sins, even as we know that Christ reaches out to us in his mercy. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart, we have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, who called your church to bear witness that you are in Christ reconciling the world to yourself, help us to proclaim the good news of your love that all who hear it may be drawn to you. Through him who was lifted up on the cross and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. 
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. This is the 13th chapter, beginning at the 8th verse. Owe no one anything except to love one another. For the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and any other commandment are summed up in this world. Love your neighbour as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbour. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. Besides this, you know what time it is, how it is now the moment for you to wake from sleep. For salvation is nearer to us now than when we became believers. The night is far gone. The day is near. Let us then lay aside the works of darkness and put on the armour of light. Let us live honourably as in the day, not in revelling and drunkenness, not in debauchery and licentiousness, not in quarrelling and jealousy. Instead, put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. For the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Your word is truth, O Lord. Consecrate us in the truth. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus spoke to his disciples. If another member of the church sins against you, go and point out the fault when the two of you are alone. If the member listens to you, you have regained that one. But if you're not listened to, take one or two others along with you, so that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If the member refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if the offender refuses to listen even to the church, let such a one be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, truly I tell you, if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Those words with which we conclude the Gospel reading, the words of Jesus. Where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. I am in the midst of them. That's what we remember of Jesus' words, isn't it? That there, where two or three are gathered, Jesus is in the midst of us. But we do well to notice that it's preceded by some other words. If two of you agree on anything you ask, it will be done for you. It's good to feel God's presence in our midst. But there's another point that has to be made, that this is also about agreeing with other people, finding, finding agreement with them. And that can be something else, can't it? How good at you are you at agreeing with other people? Or do you just want them to agree with you and your point of view. The common mind is something different. We need to look at the context in which Jesus speaks. Jesus is talking about what to do when you have a disagreement with somebody else, when you fall out with them. He's addressing the issue 
of when somebody sins against you. That implies that they're the ones who are at fault, assumes the other person is wrong. Straight away, of course, we have to ask, is that always the case? Is it the other person's fault? Well, nevertheless, Jesus gives a process by which we should deal with that falling out. The process is, first of all, just have a quiet word between the two of you. If that doesn't work out, well then, you say something about what might be a first century mediation process. Bring somebody else in to help you come to agreement, to effect a reconciliation between the two of you. And only if that fails, should you then go to the wider community, take it to the church, other words that are used in the gospel translation we have today. But that word church, ecclesia in Greek, means the gathering. It's about the wider community, people who may be the support mechanism for you. How often though, instead of going through that process, the quiet word, mediation, talking with a wider support group, how often instead, when we fall out with other people, do we find ourselves simply having an outburst against them and then telling everyone else about how awful that other person is, what in this area we'd call slagging them off. Agreement is what Jesus wants for people who've fallen out. He asks us to work for reconciliation. After all, his whole purpose is to reconcile the world to God, to reconcile people to each other. It's Jesus who reaches out in love, and his love is so great that it takes him to the cross. So can't we reach out to each other in love? We heard two readings. The first reading was from St. Paul's letter to the Romans. What does he say there? Own no one anything except to love one another. Love, says St. Paul, is what fulfills the law. Love your neighbour as yourself. As I've said, these are ancient words from the Bible, words which Jesus takes up when he says that the whole of the law is summed up in two commandments, love God, love your neighbour as yourself. Now St. Paul sums it up the same way, love your neighbour as yourself, love does no wrong to a neighbour, therefore love is the fulfilling of the law. We need to ask, how can we live out that law of love? I think it's more than, I never did anyone any harm. That's what sometimes people say to me. Love, rather, is active, ready to take the initiative, seeking agreement and reconciliation, ready to forgive. All of that is a big ask. But the good news is that God himself is love. And already he's there waiting for us in his love. We make the profession of faith in the words of the creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, 
and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world. And let us thank God for his goodness. We recognize our call to love, our call to reconciliation, our call to forgiveness, even as God himself has forgiven us, as Christ has reached out to us in his mercy. As a response which we use now in these prayers, after the words, Jesus, Lord of life, the response is, in your mercy, hear us. So we pray to Jesus who is present with us to eternity. Jesus, Lord of life, in your mercy, hear us. Jesus, light of the world, bring the light and peace of your gospel to the nations. We pray for peoples who live in the midst of discord, where communities are divided within themselves, where nations are still at war with one another. Pray for all who long for peace, for the building of peace in our own nation, in other nations too. We pray for those who lead us within our nation, those who make decisions on our behalf. We pray that they may work for a wider consensus than political advantage and for the good of all. Jesus, Lord of life, in your mercy, hear us. Jesus, bread of life, give food to the hungry and nourish us all with your word. We pray for those who do hunger, for those in other nations whose plight we may forget. We pray for those within our own communities who find this time hard, for those who find themselves on reduced income through furlough, for those who find themselves without work or an income, for those who struggle to feed their families. Jesus, Lord of life, in your mercy, hear us. Jesus, our way, our truth, our life, be with us and all who follow in the way. We pray for the building up of your church, for our sharing of our faith, for our deepening in that faith and in prayer. Deepen our appreciation of your truth and fill us with your life. Jesus, Lord of life, in your mercy, hear us. Jesus, good shepherd, who gave your life for the sheep, recover the straggler, bind up the injured, strengthen the sick, and lead the healthy and strong to new pastures. We pray for those whose need of healing we know. Amongst them we pray for Robert, Ashley, Anne, Brian, Joan, Stephen, Mavis, Rachel, Dobson, Ruth, Bill, Elia, Bill, Margaret, Juliet, 
and Edith. Those whom we name, whose need we know. Jesus, Lord of life, in your mercy hear us. Jesus, the resurrection and the life, we give you thanks for all who have lived and believe in you. Pray for those we love who have departed this life, those whom now we name who have recently died, amongst them David Parker, Hilda Cornforth, and Hazel Cousins, those who've died in past years at this time, Joy Wilson, Ronnie Willis, John William Spanton, Doreen Lambert, Robert William Thompson, William Storey, Winifred Robson, Richard Davis, Jean Robson, George White, Florence Hughes, Una Owens, James William Jobling, Dora Rainsford, Julian Westgarth, Harry Smith, Joan Bartrop, Dorothy Ann Dinning, William Neville Ayton. Raise us with them, we pray, to eternal life. Jesus, Lord of life, in your mercy, hear us. In a time of stillness now, let us make our own particular thanksgivings and prayers to God our Father. Rejoicing in the fellowship of Mary and the Apostles, of St. John the Evangelist, St. Cuthbert, and of all your saints, we commend ourselves and the whole creation to your unfailing love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's bring all our prayers to God our Father as we join together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Divided we may be at this time, separated by distance from those we love, finding ourselves perhaps more or less locked up in our own homes. Those who can't go out because they're still shielding. Those who are not yet mixing with other people. Nevertheless, we're called to be one in Christ, as we recognise in the words of the peace. Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We meet in his name and share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. We may find ourselves separated as well from the sacraments, yet Christ is ever near to us. So I invite you now to an act of spiritual communion. We use the ancient prayer, the Anima Christi, which is to be found in the back of the order of the Eucharist, which has been circulated to many within our parishes and which you can find online as well through our website. Whether or not you can join in the words Make them your own, as I say them. Soul of Christ, sanctify me. Body of Christ, save me. Blood of Christ, invigorate me. Water from the side of Christ, wash me. Passion of Christ, strengthen me. O oh, good Jesus, hear me. Within your wounds, hide me. Let me never be separated from you. From the power of darkness, defend me. In the hour of my death, call me and bid me come to you. 
that with your saints I may praise you forever and ever. Amen. I wish you Christ's peace and blessing during the coming week. As I say, our Sunday services continue, and this week as well we're going to begin midweek services in St John's Church in Castleside with the Wednesday 10 o'clock Eucharist. Uh, you'll be welcome here, um, though we have a capacity, of course, of about 26 or so, but we probably will be within those numbers. We look forward to the time when we will all be able to meet again with one another, as well as in Christ. And now we seek his blessing. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen.